Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a wrap and turn short row sock toe for a sock that's worked from the toe up. I'm using this shaping method for the toe of my free climber socks. Generally speaking, short row toes and heels are worked across half of your sock stitches. For the first part of the shaping, each row is going to be one stitch shorter than the last, and each row ends with a special turning stitch. In this case, it's going to be a wrap and turn. You continue until about a third of the stitches on each side of the sock are turning stitches, and a third of the stitches at the center are regular stockinette stitches. For the second half of the shaping, each row is one stitch longer than the last row, and you close up the sides, and you keep doing that until there's just one turning stitch on each side of the sock, and then you begin working in the round. So let me show you how it works. I used Judy's Magic Cast On to cast on all of my sock stitches. I'll include a link to the cast on tutorial in the video description if you'd like to learn this technique or need a refresher. A provisional cast on would also work nicely in this situation, but I think it's a little bit fussier to do. All of my cast on stitches are going to be here across the top of my foot at the base of the toe. I'll be shaping the top half of the toe by working across half of the cast on stitches, the stitches that are on this back needle. Since I'm using the magic loop method for my sock, half of my stitches are going to be held on the cord of my circular needles. I'm not going to work them at all and I'm just going to leave them on the cord until the toe is complete and I'm ready to start the foot of my sock. So to begin our toe, we're going to knit across until one stitch before the side of the toe. Now it's time for us to wrap and turn that last stitch. I like to think of it just a little bit differently than just wrapping and turning. Instead, I like to slip, wrap, return, set up, and turn. It's a little bit longer to remember, but that's how it's work. it works. So you just slip the stitch purlwise without twisting it, wrap your yarn around the side of the stitch, return the stitch to your left needle, and then continue wrapping to set up for your next stitch. And now you can see that stitch has a little collar around its neck. And you can turn your work over to the other side. Now we're going to purl across all of our toe stitches until we get to one stitch before the other side of the toe. Before I wrap and turn this very first wrong side row stitch, I'm going to do something a little bit special. And this is not something that you have to do, but it will make your life easier when we get to the end of the sock toe. And that is just to clip a little locking stitch marker around our yarn before we do our wrap and turn. And we're only going to do it for this very first wrong side wrap and turn. The wrap and turn is worked exactly the same way as before. You slip a stitch purlwise without twisting it, wrap the yarn around the side of the stitch, return it to your left needle, 
continue the wrap just to set up for your next stitch and then turn your work over to the other side. So for every right side row now, we're going to work to one stitch before this wrapped stitch. So I'm going to knit across to one stitch before the wrapped stitch. There's my wrapped stitch. I stopped one stitch before it. So now I'm going to wrap this next stitch. And again, we're going to slip one stitch purl wise without twisting it. Wrap our yarn around the side of the stitch. Return the stitch to our left needle. Again, without twisting it. Finish the wrap by setting up for our next stitch and then turning our work. And you can see the wrap there. Again, it has a little collar right around its neck. So now we can turn the work over. And as you're getting started with wrap and turns, it can be a little bit hard to remember and see where your wrapped stitches are. So sometimes it can be beneficial, especially if you're new to this, to just place a stitch marker on your needle to separate your wrapped stitches from your unwrapped stitches on each side as you go. So I'm going to just place that stitch marker there so I know that the stitches on this side have been wrapped and the stitches on the other side are unwrapped. Now I'm going to purl across to one stitch before the wrapped stitch. So this is my wrapped stitch. I stopped one stitch before the wrap stitch, and now I need to do my wrap and turn. So slip a stitch, purlwise without twisting, wrap the yarn around the side, return the stitch back to the left needle, finish the wrap to set up for your next knit stitch, and turn your work over. And again, on this side, I'm going to place a marker here on my knitting needle, whoops, just to separate these two stitches that I have already wrapped with, just or to separate them from the stitches that are unwrapped on the other side of the marker. So these are the wrapped stitches, these are the unwrapped stitches. Let's work one more right side row just so I can show you how to deal with the stitch markers as you're working. So you're going to work across until you get to one stitch before the wrap stitch. So one stitch before the marker. So I'm one stitch before the wrapped stitch which is at the marker here. So now it's time to wrap and turn this next stitch. Slip it. I'm going to drop this marker off my needles because I don't need it there right now. I'll put it back on in a second. Wrap the stitch. Return it to the left needle. Finish wrapping my stitch by bringing it around and setting up for my next stitch and then turning the work over. And again, I'm going to place that marker back onto my knitting needle to keep the wrapped stitches separated from the unwrapped stitches just to make things a little bit easier to see so that I don't lose my place as I'm working. So now I just continue on until a third of the stitches on each side of my sock toe have been wrapped and a third of the stitches between the markers at the center are not wrapped. I have finished knitting the first half of my wrap and turn short row toe and I slid these unwrapped stitches at the center of the toe onto another needle just so you can see how everything is shaping up here. 
you should have the same number of wrapped stitches on each side of the toe. Now we'll begin working the second half of the shaping. And to do that, I am going to knit across those center stitches all the way until I get to the next wrapped stitch, which happens to be right where the marker is on the other side. So I'm just going to knit across until I get to the next wrapped stitch. I'm all done with my demonstration needle, so I'll just set that aside. I'm going to drop my marker off my knitting, and we need to work the wrap and the stitch together. To do that, take the right needle, go up through the wrap on the right side, and then knit the stitch and the wrap together. And you do that, you kind of need to rotate your needle down so that you can get that new stitch through both the stitch and the wrap. Once they've been worked together, you wrap and turn the next stitch, just like we have been. So slip, wrap, return it to the left needle, finish the wrap and set up for the next stitch. And then we would turn. But before we turn, you can see now that this first stitch on my left needle has two little collars around its neck. It's double wrapped now. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So now that we've seen that it's double wrapped, we are going to turn things over to the other side. And I'm gonna continue using markers just to keep my wrapped stitches and my unwrapped stitches separated. On the wrong side, you purl across until you get to that next wrapped stitch. Again, I'm going to drop the marker off of my needles. And just like before, we need to work the wrap and the stitch together. So we're going to kind of turn things so you can see on the right side. The right needle tip, again, comes up under the wrap. But this time, we're going to lift it up onto the left needle tip and then purl the wrap and the stitch together. And then wrap and turn the next stitch, just like before. Slip, wrap, return it, set up for the next stitch, and turn our work over. And again, you can see that this stitch now has a double collar. There's two wraps around its neck. So I'm gonna return my marker back to the needle just to keep my wrapped and unwrapped stitches separated. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knit all the way across to the double wrapped stitch. I'll drop my stitch marker off my needle. There's the double wrap stitch. I want to work both wraps and the stitch together. So on the right side here, I'm going to bring my right needle tip up under both wraps and then knit the stitch and the wraps together and it's kind of a rotating motion to get the new stitch through. Whoops, and I split it there. Let's try one more time. So bring your needle up through both wraps and then knit the stitch and the wraps together. And then drop the stitch off the left needle and then wrap and turn. So slip, wrap, return, finish wrapping to set up. Again, that stitch has been double wrapped and turn our work over and I'm going to replace the marker. And now on the purl side, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to purl across until we get to the double wrapped stitch. And once we reach that double wrap stitch, we can drop the marker off and we need to work the wraps and the stitch together. So on the right side, bring your right needle tip up through both wraps. Up through both wraps. And lift those wraps up onto the left needle. And then purl both the wraps and the stitch together. and then wrap and turn. So slip, wrap, 
return, finish the wrap to set up for the next stitch and turn. And again, that's been double wrapped now. So I'm going to place the marker back onto my needle and then I'm going to keep doing the same thing where you work across to the double wrap stitch, work the wraps and the stitch together, wrap and turn, and the same on the purl side, you would purl across to the double wrap stitch, work the wraps, both wraps and the stitch together, wrap and turn your next stitch, and you keep that process going until you have one double wrapped stitch left on each side of the sock toe. I have finished shaping the toe of my sock and I have one double wrapped stitch left on each side of the toe. Now I'm ready to begin working in the round. However, I still need to work each of the double wrapped stitches together with their wraps when I encounter them. So I'm going to begin by knitting across to that first double wrapped stitch. So there is my double wrap stitch and we're going to treat it exactly the same as all the other double wrap stitches on the right side. I'm going to bring my needle tip up through both wraps on the right side and then I'm going to knit the stitch and the wraps together and then drop the stitch off my left needle. So now I am ready to turn and to work the stitches that were held before. So I'm going to turn my work and keep knitting in the round here. Since I'm doing magic loop, there's a little bit of shifting that needs to happen with my needles. So now I'm going to work across the stitches at the top of the toe that were held before. So in this case, I'm just going to knit across them. Sometimes you may work across them in a specific stitch pattern, but I'm just going to knit across all of the stitches that were held while we worked our toe. Once I reach the end, I can turn my work, shift my needles since I'm doing magic loop. And this is where we encounter that very first stitch that we wrapped on the wrong side. And remember, I put a stitch marker there and this is where that stitch marker is going to make things a little bit easier for us to work. The stitch marker is around the lower wrap of the stitch. And let's see if I can see the upper wrap. The upper wrap is right here. However, when I am closing up this very last stitch, I generally only work with the lower wrap. And what I'm gonna do is use the stitch marker to lift that lower wrap up onto my left needle tip And once it's on the needle, I can remove the stitch marker. And then I'm going to knit this stitch and that lower wrap together. And that just closes things up nicely. There's no rule that says you can't also work the upper wrap there to close things. However, to me, it's a little bit cumbersome and you really don't get that much difference in how the side of your sock is going to look. So once that last double wrap stitch is closed up, you can go ahead and just keep working in the round for the foot of your sock. Just in case you're curious of how things look on the inside of the sock toe, I'll go ahead and turn it so that the wrong side is out. That is the tail from the cast on. And you can see here that it's just stocking it around the sock and then each side has just this little edge to it. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to work a wrap and turn 
short row toe for a toe up sock. And if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my free climber socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting.